I was way on vacation, but I did find comic books at some antique dealers and found some pretty good stuff. Uh, let's take a look at it up next on this video from Bronzeville Comics. Hello, panelologists. This is Jim from Bronzeville Comics coming to you with another video. And in this video, we're going to take a look at um, my vacation comic book haul from some antique shops um, that we go to every year. Uh, now, the first time I frequented these was, I guess, in 2021. And antique shops are great when the market is rising because people bring stuff there. They look up prices. They leave them at the antique shop. And then the prices go up quickly. You know, that's what was happening in 2021. Um, but now we're on the other end where prices are kind of falling off. So as I went around, um, saw a decent amount of comic books. Some priced fairly, um, you know, and but uh, nothing at the deals I was looking for. I mean, if I found something I really wanted at a fair price, maybe. Um, and sometimes you can get ahead of the, the curve. Um, by checking out condition, but I mean, you dig and sometimes it's an awful lot of, well, I, here's, here's a little example of one of the, uh, antique malls we went to. So we're flipping through a box here at one of the antique stores and we come across this. Is it, is it, is it, uh, no, I was really looking for the newsstand edition of that, that Batman 457 in a newsstand, that's the second print when it has that banner on the top. That is a the newsstand is incredibly pricey, but this is just a trip around one of the antique malls. Um, just a quick look at some of the stuff. And when I'm hunting, I am looking for two things: either comics or not comics. But here are comics. Um, nothing to be found here at the prices they were asking. Uh, things were priced. In the fair market value range, but nothing I was really interested in. But sadly, the spinner rack, sorry, comic stand not for sale. Those spinner racks are very sought after by collectors. And here's a trip. This was the last one we went to, uh, kind of on our way out. One comic book on this pile of Vanity Fair magazines. So nothing else there. And just a look around. Um a cooler, a glassware, and a creepy doll, croquet set, uh, just all sorts of stuff. And I honestly, I don't pay attention to anything else. I mean, I might, you know, say, oh, that's kind of interesting. Um, but I am really, when I'm hunting, I'm only, only looking for comic books. You might see something there like, oh my goodness, that's a classic Whatever. I see this pile of crummy comics and I go through the whole thing and there was really nothing here. 90s stuff. And you kind of get the feeling right off the bat that, yeah, this isn't going to work out. That even if there is a good book in there, it's been picked through. That somebody has found it already. I think sometimes you get lucky if they put new inventory out. But uh, that is usually not the case. So, um, yeah, we went to, I think it was maybe half a dozen different places uh, over the course of a couple days when it was rainy out. And uh, we, we saw some... Um, we saw some uh, interesting stuff, and uh, I did get some good comic books. Um, actually, of, of everybody in the family, I, I think I was the one who got the most stuff. Um you know, one of my kids got a CD that they were interested in and not really, they look for jewelry and stuff, but, um, you know, it wasn't a big, big score there. So I, I as you see, this pile is not really that promising. So. Yeah, that's about it for that pile. 
again, unfortunately, when it's like disorganized. Yeah, sometimes you get this good stuff in disorganization. There's a DNA agent, but it was not a Dave Stevens cover. And it's some of those things that kind of have jumped up as keys recently that are the ones you're going to find at uh, an outfit like this. So, yep, that's... So the dealers are there. You can't really make deals because, you know, folks have set up their stuff there. And um, the antique dealer in these uh, multi-vendor uh, lots will have, they'll have a number for each of the booths that they have. And then they'll make note of it. And sometimes one of the places, their um, record keeping is antique in and of itself. It's like a dot matrix printer and they all have it in a computer um, because they want to know the inventory that they've sold for each of the customers. So um, this is actually the last one I went to. I only picked up three books. Uh, Captain Savage, number 10. I figure it's a pretty nice condition. It's only six bucks for a 12 cent um, Silver Age book. Then I picked up this. I think this is a very underrated book. It's an Adam Hughes cover. Um, and it, you know, Justice League, and it does, uh, focus maybe not enough on, uh, fire. Um, and it's a newsstand edition. So this is in pretty nice shape. I might consider grading this. This is a newsstand from 1990. Don't have too much sales. Sometimes this sells for over a hundred bucks in a, a normal edition. So maybe I'll get it graded. There's, there's one defect that I'm hoping is pressable that, um, you know, we'll take a look at it. We'll throw it in the press and see what happens. And then I picked up this, and I blame John from Mo Bronze of Modern Gods. <laughs> but um, this Blackhawk series, he had recommended, and I've been picking these up when I see them for cheap. Uh, this is Mark Avanier and Dan Spiegel were doing the run on this. So, um, yeah, I I've been I've gotten a pretty, uh, probably more than half of those at this point. So um, let's see what else we grabbed. Found this darker image number one. This was a hot book with the first appearance of the Max newsstand, which is much harder to find. I don't think this is a nine eight. No, it's not. Not not a nine eight contender. Um, and we talk about slab spec cell save. That's probably going to go in the cell pile. A Neil Adams cover on Challengers of the Unknown. I think that's Neil, or maybe that's uh, Nick Cardi. No, this is I'm pretty sure Nick, Nick Cardi. Challenger seventy three. This I picked up. I'm probably going to do it as a giveaway. Uh, Marvel 2 and 1, number 64. Hot book. First appearance of Sidewinder. It's in very low grade. You can see it's got tape on it and stuff. So I think I'm just going to do that as a giveaway. This is also low grade, but it's um, Thor, number 168. Uh, Argent of Galactus. Ten bucks. Uh, Legion 252. It does look a little bit better. Uh, until I saw like the water stain down there in the corner. But this is the first appearance of the Fatal Five. Nice, uh, you know, Silver Age Legion. Oh. So I picked up two copies of this book. Just a really cool John Byrne uh, Galactus cover. Uh, Grab this Phantom Stranger number two. Silver Age Horror. Cool book. Uh, this, I'm going to put in my spec piles. Jack of Hearts, number one. I picked this book up when I see it for cheap. It's a pretty nice copy. This, I picked up because I think it's a, it was a sharp copy. It was a hot book recently. Uh, this is Superman 264. It's the first appearance of Steve Lombard, who's a sports reporter for WGBS, which is where, at this point in time, Clark Kent is working as the news anchor. Um, and that, it got hot when Beck Bennett from SNL was cast to play Steve Lombard in next year's Superman movie, but this might be better than my PC copy. And it's actually probably in the nines. Really nice copy. Same thing with nice copy with this. It's got a little bit of stuff on it, but uh, a nice intact 100-pager. And this is one of the original 100-pagers. This is not in the Superboy title. This is number DC um, DC 15. So it's part of the, the, the uh, DC 100-page run, which is very weird because it doesn't starts with number three. Yeah. And then some of the books are also in title. Uh, just some classic covers. Uh, Mark Silvestri, Uncanny X-Men 234. John Byrne with Wolverine 23. Those, I think... I think they, the, the Byrne cover might be worth getting graded. 
Um, Battlestar Galactica one. I do have to take a closer look at this. That might no, it's not a nine eight contender. So I might just sell that one. Then uh, Ghosts number nine. I don't know. I don't think I have this. This is a seventy two book, so I'm, I, that's going to go on the PC. I don't think I have that yet. Gotham City Sirens. Pick up a Gotham City Sirens newsstand for a buck. That's probably going to go on the PC. Unexpected um, one twenty six. Um, that'll probably go in my Bronze Age horror sale. My receipt. Oop, don't need that anymore. And I got some more books. Yeah, this is what I refer to the dot matrix. I mean, who still has printer paper with the holes pegged on it? Just for you kids today, you might not recognize something like that. Anyway. Um, this, I got, they didn't have all the issues, but uh, issues one, two, and three of Batman the Cult. It was a four-issue series. Um, if I find issue four, that's good. That was the dollar bin. This uh, Black Chrysanthemum, um, John Tyler Christopher cover. They had a run of alias, not number one, but this is the final issue. This, uh, another Christopher Poe Dameron cover. Is that Poe Dameron number one? It is. Then I was just like picking some Star Wars ones out of the dollar bin, and I picked up an Uncanny X Men. He's probably all going to go sale. Poe Dameron number one. I am trying to get enough Star Wars books together to do a Star Wars night on whatnot. Another um, John Tyler Christopher cover. Then Batman. This is like three bucks. Three thirty-three. And then they had a good deal. They had the, these books were ten dollars each, but four for twenty dollars. So like half price if you got four of them. So I grabbed an FF one hundred and nine and a Flashpoint number one. This is a, a variant cover. I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna keep that. I have to take a close look. Crisis on Infinite Earths number eight. Death of Barry Allen. Pretty nice copy. And then this. I this also might be a PC upgrade for me. Um, Justice League of America 96. It's also a 1972 book, but I do collect Justice League of America. Um, the first appearance of... Um, oh, what's his name? The Cosmic Vampire. He reappeared like in 2010. Then this is mid-dish grade, but I can never pass it up. Shade the Changing Man number one. Spec pile. Another one of these FF257s. And then this is a book that's like... I think incredibly underpriced. Maybe there's just enough of them out there. Uh, this was six bucks, and it is Peter, uh, four color comics, nine twenty six. The first appearance of Peter Pan in comics. Um, I mean, you know, usually the first appearances of these uh, characters from the Disney movies of that era, forties, fifties, into the sixties, you know, the classic uh, animated characters uh, do go for more than 10 bucks but that's about what that is um i'm gonna see those to last this um i might this is really sharp a newsstand copy of transformers number two um this in a nine eight which maybe a little bit of a shot at 250 dollar book might be more in a newsstand. This is over 200 Then I grabbed this because... Why not? Secret Wars number five. That was a hot book when the trailer to Deadpool and Wolverine came out. First appearance of Onslaught in a newsstand. Uh, this I might keep. At least, yeah, I keep it. I, don't ha I never got this series. Long Shot number one in a newsstand. Love the Art Adams artwork on this. Uh, much more detailed line work, fine line work, than um, his recent stuff that he tends to do some really popular good girl art. But, I mean, I just really like his early stuff. Then the last two books. One is a keeper, and I was really glad to find it. It's in nice shape. Um, probably like a seven six five maybe um it's our gang comics i forget the number um but 
it's from May 1946. And what's interesting about this is it's um, our gang was owned by MGM. Now, those of you not familiar, um, it was a series of shorts that started in the silent era. Um, and it was basically a group of kids, you know, that got into some shenanigans. Um, also known as the Little Rascals, it was syndicated in television in the 60s and 70s, quite a bit into the 80s. Um, in the 90s, they did a movie version of this. Um, but uh, there's some some classic um, stuff in here. Now, also, there's like a Tom and Jerry um, story in here. So a lot of stuff related to MGM properties of the mid 40s. And then probably the best book of the day. But that's really cool to get for my May 1946 collection. Very happy with that. Um, Mid-grade copy here. But especially in light of, of, the, of news that surfaced in the last couple of days on this. Um, and it was it was like just 22 bucks. It was so this particular antique mall, they had some of this stuff was in cases. Uh, so they had comics in cases and it was actually 20 percent off for the stuff. So I asked to see the cases and one of the workers brought it out and went through the books. And I got stuff there last year. So got some decent stuff. Um, and. This was like the second book. So maybe he had just put it in there and I'm not sure we get the pricing on it, but hey, I I think I know why. Um, but I just grabbed it up. Special Marvel edition number 15, the first appearance of Shang-Chi. Now, this is not as pricey as it was three years ago before the movie came out um, and when things were booming. But I got it for that less 20%. So I got it for like 18 bucks. I had to pay tax on it. Um, you know, it is mid-grade, you know, but it's still a nice, complete copy. Um, and I think what happens is when people aren't really familiar with comics, when you see, when you look at the trade dress, you're like Master of Kung Fu. It looks like that is the title of the book. People looking up, well, what's well, Master of Kung Fu 15? I don't see that. They're not recognize that the title is special marvel edition now if you're uncertain of like where to find the title um of a book for most books i mean you can still find it um but there's something called the indicia which is either on the inside front cover or on the first page generally speaking in more recent years it's gone to the last page it's on the fourth page you know, in the last 20 years or so. But for older books, all the information is there. Special Marvel Edition, that's the title. And then Volume 1, Number 15, December 1973. All that information is there. You, you just have to open the book. So a lot of times I'll see books that are, you know, for Showcase or Brave and the Bold or Marvel Premiere where the, the actual title is in smaller print on the trade dress than the character that they're trying to focus on. Um, and sometimes that people can't really identify that properly. So that was a really good pickup. Um, that's going to be a little, my whatnot sale tonight. So got to get that a new bag and board. Um, so those are the pickups. Um, again, kind of hit or miss, but, you know, on a rainy day on vacation, um, we kind of, you know, all go looking for our different stuff in these antique malls, the family. And... Um, I brought all these home and I think I got swimmers here too. Um, so <laughs> any rate, um, now it's time to get back into the, the comic book realm after being on vacation for a week and change. So um, I'd like to thank you all for stopping by and look at the videos. Uh, you know, if you can take a look at a couple of my other videos here and this is Jim saying until next time, enjoy your comics.